Thank you, Brother Cedric, for that introduction. <laughs> you know, uh, it's good to be here. I was uh, telling a couple of people this morning, you know, they said, Ooh, it's good to see you. And I said, I'm going to tell you like Austin Lane told me. I told him, I said, I saw you the other day. He said, that's good. Most of my people don't see me. So keep that in mind. It's good that I can see you. It's good to be back into this room. This is where it all started in this room for me. And I'm grateful that the pastor thought enough of me to ask me to fill in for him this morning. Uh, I'd like to say to these deacons and trustees, God has been with you through this trial that we've had. Brother Taylor, God bless you. You did a great job. And we, uh, we, we, we're grateful to you, all of you. I, I, I was, I, I'm gonna get to the message in just a moment, but it's just so uh, good to be back here and, and the thoughts that I have with that corner back there is the only thing that keeps me going strong. So this morning, as you see me looking back there, I'm not looking at anybody in particular. I'm just thinking. Today, the Lord has led me to speak to you from the book of, from the Psalms. Psalms number 23 is the one that I, I, I kind of I think that's some, just about everybody's favorite. Because in the morning when I'm walking, early in the morning, I, 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 can, I, I, I can quote that psalm as I walk along. Psalms 23. I know everybody's familiar with this. It's only six verses. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I'll fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There's one other scripture I want to put with that, and that is uh, Revelation uh, 7, 17. Uh, if you care to turn over there. Uh, I don't know if Nick has it up there or not. You know, 717, Revelation. Let me know when you find it. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. We are going to use for a brief topic Christ, the divine shepherd. Christ, the divine shepherd. When we speak of shepherd, I'm surely most of us, if we've had any uh, experience with wildlife and animals, we know what a sheep is. Most of us do. And when we talk about a shepherd, David is saying here, the Lord is my shepherd. You see, David had some problems. Although he became king, there was a lot of jealousy going on in David's time. And we know who that was. But David had to hide himself in the mountains from Saul. He had to flee for him his life just as Moses did at one time. But David is having time. See, God sometimes has to get us off to ourselves so he can reach your inner spirit. It seemed like the only time when I really get deep involved with the Holy Spirit. It's when I'm alone. Oh, I love coming to church. But this is not where I really shout. I don't have time, enough time to shout here. This place is too small. I don't have time to shout in my house. I tear everything up. But when I'm out on the sidewalk, out walking through the neighborhood, I, I, I sometimes have to catch myself because I get like I'm talking to someone with me. You see that some say he walks with me and he talks with me. Yeah. You see, I know what that means. Yeah. See, he really will talk with you if you allow him. And he will walk with you. Oh, I tell you, it is good to have a shepherd like Jesus. Now, the word shepherd, we, we, we say our pastors is our shepherd. And uh, he is. He's standing in for the gap for Jesus Christ. And we ought to respect that. We ought to respect that. Regardless to who he is or where the church, what church, excuse me, what church he pastors, we ought to respect the man of God. You see, we are, we are being tried every day. And two, we want to be like David. We want to have some good memories. He anointed my head with oil. See, when Samuel anointed David, he didn't just forget that, you see. Now, when I, what I want to lift here is the, the, uh, the next thing is we're going to go back to, 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 to that 
23rd Psalm, and I'm going to stay there for a few minutes. It's only six verses, and I'm going to try to cover these six verses. David, this psalm is credited to David, and it is considered one of the Messianic psalms. Uh, uh, psalms. And when we look at it here, David says, the Lord is my shepherd. David, there was times when David was hungry, but God fed him through Jonathan. God made a way for him, even in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the high, in his hide, hiding days. He, God took care of him. And then he says here, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That means something to a, a sheep. All that he needs is available. And he let me lie down and rest in green pastures. Not cactus dry sand or burn up grass but green pastures. Can you, can you picture that in your mind? As far as I can see everything I need my shepherd led me here. Then he says here when I get thirsty I look and I see this running stream he said, he leadeth me, leadeth me beside the still waters. There's no danger of getting a drink from still water. I don't know if any of you have been to Niagara Falls and you watch the water come. We can get in about, on the Canadian side, you can get up to about seven or eight feet away from, the, from the actually where the water is pouring in. And it's so rapid, you don't want to get no closer. And I tell you, it looks dangerous. I wouldn't want to try to drink water at that particular place. You see, some places are not good to drink. You don't know whether the water contaminated or not. But he said, he leads me beside the steel waters, fresh waters. He restores my soul when I get tired. He revives me. Give me a chance to catch my breath. You see, he restores my soul. Oh, I tell you, God is good, isn't he? He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. You know, in the Matthew it says, lead us not into temptation. So when we find ourselves in a tempted position, situation, don't say God put me here for a test. Everywhere we go, God didn't put us there. We strayed off from the shepherd and found ourselves in a situation that we didn't understand. But he said he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. You see, we need to think of that. When we are, we, we are, we are, we're supposed to do righteousness for his name's sake. But we can't live any kind of way and do anything and in and everything just to get along with in and everybody and, and, and please the shepherd. We might just get that rod a little bit, you know, when you get out of line. Then he tells us, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death. You know, these days, the shadows of death is everywhere. I don't know if you look, listen to the news. I used to didn't, but now I, 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 I listen to it. I have plenty of time. And some of the things that I see and hear is unbelievable. And we wonder, 
where is all of those good people? They're there. There's plenty of them. Oh, yeah, there's plenty of good people. But you notice we don't get no credibility from the news people. They're only looking for something bad that reach out and get your attention. And while you're doing that, they got you sitting there watching those commercials. They got to have a story for the 6 o'clock news. They got to have a story. But we got to remember that the she our shepherd has already given us everything we need. We just need to be obedient. All right. Thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comforts me. Some people, you know, they ask me, and I'm not saying this to be uh, in a negative way, but when something happens to us, people I look at and talk to shows me their true faith. Now, if you really trusted in the Lord, and have this faith that you say you have. Now listen to me now. Because we are putting, saying one thing. And people are seeing a different thing. He said I would have no fear. If, you, if you're really walking with the shepherd. The sheep has no fear. Of the wolves of the coyotes, all the dangers, even if he falls into a crack. He has a staff, and his arm is not too sharp that he can't pull you up. And, 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 and if one strays away, the shepherd would leave, Jesus said, with his best, to leave the, the, the nine, if he had a, a hundred sheep, he would leave the ninety and nine in protected custody somewhere. And he's going to go out and find that lost sheep. And when I say that, I think of a scripture that says, Woe be unto the pastors who has allowed the sheep to scatter and has not gone to visit them. I will come and visit on him. See? Huh? Ain't that what he said? See, see, we, we, if we're the shepherd, we spoke, we, we are leading the sheep, and we are taking care of the sheep. Now, I'm not saying that to, to, to say any of you ministers are, are and I'm, God knows I'm not talking about Reverend Bonner, because I think he's a good shepherd. We might, some of you might not think so. You wouldn't think so if I was your shepherd. You wouldn't think so, you wouldn't think so if uh, 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 Brother Taylor was your shepherd or any of these ministers up here. You might for a few days, but you see, that's, that's short-lived. So what I'm saying this here, put your trust in God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit as your leader, because we are just human. We have weaknesses. We fall down. But see, we are dependent on someone too. See, see, we're not at the top. Just like your president, he's not at the top. That's, he's dependent on somebody else for his paycheck. You see? So what I'm saying, when we trust God, we can say like David, now prepares a table. Child of God uh, 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 has no need to worry about being fed. He's promised already that I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Don't be worried when you see the shadows of the night fall. Things get dim and weary. God is right there. He said, I'll never leave you. Neither will I forsake you. Oh, he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemy. Some folks don't want to see you eat good. And they can't eat good. I said something that I had to repent myself. 
concerning that. When I was working on my job, I'm working hard, man, make, I'm making money, and I'd go to the supermarket, and I'd see people that didn't work at all was, was able to buy better goods than I were. But I said, now, that don't seem right. But as I thought about it, I saw it was right. Because everybody is not in the position they're in because of their own doing. Circumstances change. Things happen. Good people, educated people, sometimes they lose their way, lose their job. They need assistance. They paid to this society. They deserve it. And we deserve to give our health and strength to refurbish what they take out. Stop saying that if you ever said it. I don't say it anymore. We don't know where we're going to end up. He said here, right in the presence of my enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will what? Dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David is saying, I'm going to dwell. I'm not looking for, at where I came from. I'm looking at where I'm going. Huh? See, the goal we look for is put, should, put, should be in front of you, not behind you. Keep your eye on the prize. See, when you're running for Jesus or running for a marathon, you want to keep it up here, the thoughts of winning. Everyone that runs has that thought of winning. Otherwise, you wouldn't get in the race. And that leads me to, to say this. It's not just for the preacher are the teachers to carry the responsibility of all of us after we've done all we can. Every individual that gives himself to Christ does it for a purpose. You have to have a purpose for doing that. And when we make that commitment, everyone who has already made that commitment has an obligation of a, to teach you and to bring you to the teaching point. If we, if we remember now, we're trying to make teachers out of every soul in this church. You're not just coming here to to learn and learn and learn and learn and don't do anything with it. Jesus died once and for all time. And when we accept him as our savior, we accept him at the same time as our leader. He said he was gonna send one to, to, to take his place. He wasn't gonna leave us alone. So now, one who we seldom hear his name, he seldom get an invitation, and that is the one that's totally in charge of the church today. And that is the Holy Spirit. We don't, we, 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 sell, we used to invite the Holy Spirit to come in and be with us while we worship. We want to get back to that, folks. God, God has given us a, 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 another chance to be obedient and to please him. And all of you teachers, don't feel bad if you don't have a one student. Jesus started out by himself. He didn't have nobody. Think about it. Then he said one day he walked 
by the sea when the time was right. See, God does things on time, on his time, not our time. He don't use these clocks like we use here. We, we try to calculate God's time by our days. When we talk about uh, six days, in the average mind, people will think, like I did at one time, that six days is six times 24 hours. But that sounds good and looks good. But you know, the, the world is still being formed, even until this day. If you would watch your National Geographic, you would see that the, the earth is, is, is study, study working, it's, it's study building itself, even today. So when we say the, what God made the uh, world in six days, he rest. He didn't rest like we rest. He had accomplished what he wanted to accomplish at that point. And, when, and, and we don't go sit down and say, well, I got it made. I, I, I've learned all I need to learn. But I, my thoughts are is to share what I, whatever it is. We all know something. We all have something to teach here. Everybody in this room is able to teach something. Because you you, you're around somebody at some time that doesn't know the same things that you. And you doesn't know the same things that he might know. So you can teach each other. And when we depend on, we say, we didn't get nothing out of that service today. We didn't get nothing from that message today. You know why? You weren't looking for nothing. <laughs> see, see, when you come to pastors up preaching, I hear a lot of people, oh, that sermon, I don't know, that, that sermon's off the wall. Well, no, no, no. If it come out of here, it's important. And he's trying to feed you. That you'll be able to feed somebody else. This is a circle. God is in the recycle business. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Larry Rice ain't the only one that talks about recycling. God is in the recycling business also. You see, he... He build us up, build you up, so you can share with somebody else and build him up. We are trying to make priests out of men. Wouldn't it be nice if, uh, the, if we obeyed the, even the Old Testament, that every man should be a priest in his own household? How many people you think would be down there at the prison? Just think about it. But the law says, no, you can't train your children to, this way. Why? Because I won't have nobody in the prison. And all those jobs will go away. And all those tax dollars would go. So, so you got to realize that we have to look out for the dangerous things in this world. And come and teach. Come and learn. Learn what you can. You say, well, you don't be here every night to, to no, but I spent 40 some years in going to school. And uh, I've spent a lot of time, and then I've had to raise a family. But now my family has grown. And I can spend more time. I even had a, a, a teaching session on my job. For those. It, 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 at lunchtime, we had Bible study. At second break, we had Bible study. Yeah, yeah. And I had a desk where in a chair where people would come and sit and counsel with people, supervisors, workers, beca because I cast a shadow of Christ. And they watch you. Don't you know the people are watching you? You're telling them that you're born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, and uh, living right. And, and, and when they look at us and see us doing all kind of things, all kind of bad things and, and uh, out of control, and we talk about leading somebody. Now, what I'm saying is we need to freshen up on our leadership roles. Huh? We need to freshen up on it. 
and I'm talking to everybody, you all teachers. We all could be preachers. You don't have a, you don't have to stay back. You don't have to say, well, I don't have time to go out and get an education with a doctor's degree. I don't see where Jesus went to anybody's college. Huh? You don't see him, you know, you didn't see him, uh, uh, I don't know what college that any of the rest of them went to, the apostles. But you don't have, what I'm saying is now, when we, we have the Holy Spirit, and what we have available is enough. When you go to school and you learn how to read and write, them same words that you learn in school is in the Bible. In case you didn't know it. Those same words that you didn't understand then, they're in the dictionary. And when you get to one of those words you don't understand, stop. Get your dictionary. Don't pass on, because you just might miss the point. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just giving you a little something that helped me. You know, I used to, th I thought I knew everything. I even told my teacher once, she says, boy, you better stop fooling around and get an education. I said, oh, I don't need no education. I know enough. She said, no, you don't know enough. You gonna, she said, you're going to wish you had to listen to me one of these days. And you can, tell you, you can tell I haven't forgotten it because I'm still standing here thinking about it. <laughs> she was right. I come to St. Louis. I said, oh, I'm going out and get me a job. And you know, and, and the Lord put me in a position, place to where I can always remember that because I went up here, it used to be a little store right up here at uh, uh, Newstead and Page. I was living down on Taylor and Garfield. The man wanted somebody to work in his store. And he needed a, I, I, I'm gonna tell you this, he needed a, uh, a person to, whenever he was at the cash register, this Jewish fella, and he needed something from the back. And I had to be like a runner, you know? And he said, I, I need a bag of pretzels. And, and I would get those pretzels and bring them to him. And he said, now, I, I need somebody to do that. You think you can do that? And I said, oh, yes, I can do that. And my brother was standing there with me that brought me there. I'll show you how embarrassing it was. And the man said, okay, go back there and bring me a bag of pretzels. I had never heard of pretzels. I'm going to show you how dumb I was. Where I lived, they, I don't know if they sold pretzels. I sure didn't know what I was looking for. And I went back there, and I'm looking around, I'm looking around, and I'm standing right in front of the pretzels. So the man came back there, and he stood by me. He said, you don't see it? I said, no, sir, I don't see it. He said, well, here it is right here. He got it. And he said, come with me. We went back up front. He said, you see, I have to have someone that know how to read and can remember pictures, what things look like in order from when I call you, I don't want you back here spending all this time looking for it. I want you to be able to recognize it. Oh, that hurt me. That hurt me so bad. It embarrassed me right in front of my brother. I said, I got out of there and I said, Lord, I'm gonna do everything there is to learn how to read. I thought I could read. But I could read Tom and Jerry and, and, and the Three Blind Mice. But that wasn't enough. It didn't have pretzels in, the, in, that, in those stories. <laughs> I, I made it a habit. I said, I'm going to read every sign I see when I'm driving along. I'm going to read it and familiarize myself with it. Another young man told me, he said, well, get a newspaper and learn to read the newspaper. It will keep you in touch with the, what's going on and the new words that's coming into existence. 
Oh, okay. Then I said, well, I need to do, I need to go back to school. So I went back to school and I had to work. Couldn't go like I wanted to. And I had been studying and studying and studying. I didn't know I had learned as much as I had. I ended up going down South St. Louis to the Board of Education and took the GDD test. See, some of y'all don't want to tell this because you want to look like you're way up there. But it don't matter. I'm in God's hands now. <laughs> I'm rich. I, I don't have to worry about working no more because he takes care of me now. But I can tell you this so you don't fall in what I did. And when I did that, I was able to, they said, you can't, work, you can't get into college. They don't take you in these colleges, young folks, unless you got, or you got to first have a, a, a high school education. So don't think you're going to jump from third grade all the way up to college. You got to get all that stuff in between right. So I got my GED and I was able to go to Forest Park Community College. I took sociology. Man, that was hard at first, but then the teacher, she was willing and wanted to see us learn. She, she said, one time she said something about, we were talking about Genesis in the Bible. And she said, some, one kid asked a question, said, why is it uh, set up like that? She said, well, you see, the Bible is not in chronological arrangements. And I said, chronological, what is that, you know? Where did that come from? How am I going to learn that? Well, I, I circled that word in the book. When I got home, I got my dictionary out. I learned that word. Now, you can see I haven't forgotten it yet. But whatever you set your heart to, now, don't think that you're just going to school, young folk, and you're going to automatically get everything that you're looking for. You're gonna, have to, you're gonna have to spend some time and stay off of that cell phone. <laughs> oh yeah, and stay out of that Facebook because I know what you're doing on there. I can see what you're doing on there. And it doesn't look good. I know, I, I know you're gonna say, what do you got to do meddling in our business? Well, I'm just gonna tell you something. God's business and Facebook is not the same business. So with that, I'm going to get ready to close. I want to uh, ask the choir or have Joy. I don't know if is Joy going to sing uh, for me. Uh, we're going to give an invitation. I'm not trying to uh, fool you about anything, folks. I'm telling you, this is a real world we're living in. And we need all the teachers we can get. We need all the preachers we can get. We need all the mothers. The Bible tells the, the mothers of the deacon board, the deaconess, your job is right here in this book. And your job is to train these young women how to be good wives and housewives. And I don't see a, anything on this program about training the young women. But I hear a lot of talk about the young women when they wear their dresses too short, when they don't wear their hair right, when they have babies out of wedlock. We hear all of that. But still, you're saying I'm the deacon's wife. Think about it. Do your job. Do your job. God will bless you. You can talk about me after I leave. I won't hear you. I won't hear you. I turn my phone off when I get home. God bless you. If there be anyone who want to turn their life around today, who want to seek Jesus, who want to, who want to be a follower of this shepherd I just told you about, now is your opportunity to come and follow Jesus. If there's someone sitting back there where I sit, 40, 39 years ago, in that corner right back there, and there was a man that came down that aisle 
and touched me on the shoulder and brought me up to this front seat. If there's anybody back there that might want to, to you know, come down for prayer, I don't say just come down for prayer, but come down to make a commitment, a new commitment for your life. Come down to, to admit that you need to upgrade, that you need to be more patient and more understanding. I sent if there be one, they called him Jesus. Yes, sir. He came to
Lord, we come as humble as we know how, as empty pitchers before a full fountain, thanking you for the privilege of being able to come in prayer at this time, thanking you for the precious opportunity to cast all of our cares on you, for you careth for us. We thank you for the willingness of those that have assembled themselves, for those that are standing around the walls. You know what we need even before we ask. Some of us are just full of worry, but we cast our cares up on you today. Trouble is on the rise, but Jesus gave his life, shed his blood for our sin. The Bible says he is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. We thank you for these, your people, and we want to pray for those who are not in the assembly today. But we thank you, oh God, that you're able to handle all of our circumstances. We thank you for Pleasant Green. We thank you for each and every church door that is open in your name. Look at how mercy upon us today in the mighty name of Jesus. Look on our leaders today. In the name of Jesus, look on our nation today and those that are around us. We want to pray for those right now that are in this place who are looking to the hills from whence cometh their help. For all of our help come from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Lord, we thank you for this prayer right now. Father, we ask you to forgive us of any and all wrongdoing that we have committed in your sight. Forgive us of these things and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. Bring us into the fellowship that has been broken because of disobedience and sin. Restore unto us the joy of thy salvation in the name of Jesus. Look and have mercy upon our family members today. Some have conditions in their bodies. We are beyond our area of expertise. But God, we know that you are able. Look on our pastor today in the mighty name of Jesus and his family. We lift the prayer list today. Some are sick and shut in and many are bereaved today. Some are incarcerated. Some we don't even know where they are, haven't seen them in a while. Have mercy upon us today. But we thank you, O oh Lord, and we want to pray especially for those who are not saved, who don't even know you in the pardon of their sins, have never called on you that they might be saved. Draw them nigh unto thee. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we ask you to give us the spirit of encouragement today. We'll hold our heads up high that we might learn to persevere and to endure hardships as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the word that was preached to us today. We hold our hands up now that you might fill us with your spirit. We want to thank you for each and every one that has crossed the threshold. Give us your spirit today that we may go forward. And oh Lord, we'll be so careful and mindful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Let every heart say amen. Let us tell the Lord, thank you. If you believe in the power of prayer, thank the Lord for what he has already done and what he said he will do.